Hello. I decided to uh, share with you a quick tutorial on how to make chained dynamic blocks. I was looking online and I didn't really see much out there for a video, so hopefully this will explain some of the basics for people who are starting to use dynamic blocks and wants to make their blocks a little bit more advanced using chained actions. So right now I've got, uh, I've drawn just you can see there are simple objects, rectangles, squares and rectangles, and I'm going to make this into a dynamic block. So I'm going to call this my dynamic block. And the pick points at the corner there, zero, zero. I'm going to select the objects that I want to convert. Always good to have this checked to scale uniformly for the blocks. It will save you some grief if you need to scale them. And I'm going to open the block into the block editor after I've done this. All right, I'm in the block editor, and there's my block authoring palette. And you can see that I've got parameters, actions, and parameter sets. Parameter sets are actions with a parameter. So to make a chained dynamic block you'll need multiple actions tied to one parameter. So I could do that by just picking a parameter and then picking the actions but I'll go and speed things up by picking a parameter set. So the first parameter set I'm going to select is a linear stretch. And uh, asking for a start point so I'm going to pick the corner here and this end point now you can see that the action has been set up but it's got the little exclamation mark in there because it needs information so what it needs is a selection set it needs objects associated with that action. So I'm going to say selection set, select that first corner of stretch frame. So I'm going to stretch these objects, select the objects within that. And as soon as I've select a stretching frame and pick the object, you can see the exclamation mark is gone. And when I hover over it, it shows what is included with that set now. So let's test the block, see if it works. There's the block, pick the grip. And it works great. Let's stretch out that rectangle, it could be a table, and these could be chairs, who knows. But it's working. Close the test block, go back into the editor. Alright, so I want to have multiple actions associated with this parameter. But before I can do that, I need to select the parameter and go to the properties. And at the bottom here, you can see it says chain actions. You want to set that to yes. And what that allows is to have multiple actions associated with this parameter. So I'm going to go to the actions palette and I'm going to pick um, the array action. And it's asking, select the parameter you want to use. I will select that parameter. Select the objects. Select the objects. Distance between the columns, well, I'm just going to have that go center to center. And you can see as soon as I've done that, the ray parameter is there, and if I hover over it, you can see it highlights the squares that are it's highlighting the parameter it's using, and it's also highlighting the objects that are associated with the array. All right, so let's test this block again. There's my one grip. You can see right away it's allowing me to array the other squares and stretch the middle square. Nice. I'm going to click 
close the test block. And we're going to see if we can add another action to this. So I'm going to draw a circle. And uh, make this a smaller circle. Now I've decided I'm going to use the scale action, but or but I want the scaling point to start from the center of this circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select the parameter and I'm going to move that start point. And I'm going to move it to the center of that circle. And I'm going to move this to the middle over here. You can see the actions have gone wrong with it, gone along with it, the parameter shift. But uh, if I go over the stretches, you can see the crossing window has not changed, and neither has the array. So just be aware that moving a parameter does not affect what you've already included for a selection select set. Uh, gonna grab the scale action. Select the parameter, I'm going to use the same one. Select the object. Done. There's the scale, and as soon as I hover over it, you can see it's highlighting the object, plus the X is uh, indicating the base point for the scaling action. Let's test this block again. Select it, use the grip, and you can see it's scaling the circle up as I'm stretching this. All right, so I'm going to add one more action. drawing a big X. And I've decided I'm going to use the move action. Again, so asking which parameter I want to use. I will select this parameter. Same parameter. It says now by default it's picking second point, which is the point we actually want to do because that's the point that moves. So yes. Just hit enter, select the objects, and select these two lines. All right. So I can hover over this and I can see the points and the objects are associated with each action. Test the block. And great. So it's scaling up the circle. It's stretching out this table. It's doing an array on the the squares above and below the rectangle, and it's moving the x. So that's just a quick overview on how to create a uh, chain dynamic block. I'm gonna close the block editor. Save my changes. And we're done.